Hello, and welcome to your 56th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca, and tonight I want to talk to you about how to create an index view. So, if you'll remember, if you've been following through all of these tutorials, quite a number of tutorials back, I was torn whether or not to keep these really short and concise and just make them how-to and not do hardly any explaining. But then I found myself constantly want to explain because, well, quite frankly, a lot of times it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you don't. And I kind of rationalized and theorized that they'd be a lot shorter and flow faster if I didn't do too much explaining and just showed you how and that if you really wanted to know the how, you could go ahead and Google it. But being that I know why, it's just ingrained in me to want to share that. So I figured concept, hey. Why not just type out everything that you plan to share for the tutorial and then anyone who's watching can follow along, along and read it for themselves. Concept. Anyways, so uh, let's talk about creating index views. Index views are different from other views because they are stored on disk in the same way as a table. Something to note about an index view is that the query optimizer may reference a view to improve performance even if it's not referenced in the query. This is a feature that's only available in SQL Server Enterprise Edition. And I just have to fix that because it's going to bug me. That's the uh, OCD in me. Okay, uh, reference table requirements. So before index views can be created, you must make sure that all the reference tables meet some requirements. First off, all reference tables have to be contained within the same database. If any computed columns in the base tables are not deterministic, they must be removed. Deterministic means to always return the same value or result set. Since a requirement of an indexed view is that it must be deterministic, all the columns in the base table need to also be determined. You can use the following PSQL code right here, which uses the column property scalar function to determine if the column is deterministic. So there's our little example here. Now let's go on down. On top of being deterministic, the computed column may also need to be marked persisted. This depends on whether the data type is imprecise. Any float or real data type is considered imprecise and cannot be a key of an index unless it's marked persisted. Finally, the ANSI nulls and quoted identifier options must have been set to true when the reference tables were created. All right. So, let's scroll down here and take a look at some index view requirements. In addition, to the reference table requirements, you need to ensure a few more things prior to creating a view and as part of view creation. The following set options must be on. ANSI nulls, ANSI padding, ANSI warnings, excuse me, <coughs> uh, erythabort, concat null, yields null, and quoted identifier. And something to uh, note. The numeric round abort option must be set to off. Prior to creating the view, you must set these options. Okay, next, you must verify that the view is deterministic, as I previously kind of discussed. This means the view will return the same values each time it is queried. When you're creating the view, you must use the with schema binding option, which binds the view to the schema of the underlying tables. Lastly, the first index must be a unique cluster index. All right, now let's take a look at how to do this. Let's go ahead and create uh, index view. We're going to grab this code right here. Copy that. Go here to our query editor. Paste that in. Go ahead and type this all in. And then once you have that all ready to go, execute it. Alright, let's see. It says it was a success. Let's see, it'll say commands completed successfully. Alright, now, just as with the normal view, you can now write queries that will access this data. The advantage is that other queries that do not directly reference the view can be used by the optimizer to improve performance. 
the fist advantage that you must maintain the index, and now this view consumes disk space, which can be bad, can be a real performance hit. But as the data in the underlying tables grows, so will the views. You are now essentially storing multiple copies of the same data. So, anyways, now you know how to create an indexed view with PSQL. Thanks for stopping by this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm going to be starting to dive into user-defined functions in the next tutorial. See you there.